Hey everybody, Michael Campbell here, family pastor of Grace Church. Just wanted to go over this Sunday's lesson, how it applies to the children, how it applies to us, and genuinely how we can intentionally disciple uh, our children uh, in our care. And so this week we're actually going through Romans chapter 8 and how we should be sorry for our sin. It's actually one of the passages that got that God used for me to be saved. So coming face to face with sin in our lives often leads to one of two responses. It may lead us to feelings of guilt and shame that causes us to either run or hide or to simply stop trying and give ourselves over to a particular pattern or sin, or it may lead to a place of genuine confession and repentance, followed by a deep trust in the power of God to help us walk in that freedom. And Romans 8 provides for us a warning against living according to the flesh, but it also declares a promise that we can cling to in our battle against the sins that we face. In Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 8 and 9, it says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to them. These verses give surprising hope to the believer battling sin in his or her own life. And the hope comes um, from the Spirit of God, right? Alive and present in the follower of Jesus. What help is this in our battle against sin? It's everything. The promise of the Spirit of God living in a believer offers hope by way of the power of God. Powerful enough to defeat the devil, to raise Jesus from the dead, is alive and working to fight the sin in our own lives. Paul gives us um, a little bit further explanation too. Like not only is the Spirit of God at work in the heart of a believer, allowing us to battle against sin, but the Spirit works in such a way that we can actually praise God as well. We can have hope in our battles against sin because the Lord has given them us himself in such a way that his power at work in us, we can battle against any sin and live a life that's actually pleasing to him. Romans 8, 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal body, bodies to life through the spirit who lives in you. This is an amazing truth, and I genuinely believe that you can't appreciate the cure unless you understand what the disease is. The same thing goes for the gospel. We are um, in a sin-filled world this side of heaven, and until we understand our need for a Savior, we won't appreciate what Jesus Christ God in flesh has done for us. And so this is it's like some of the topics that we're going over, like really weighty. And I, I pray that you would also consider some of these biblical truths as you head into this weekend, whether it's in your own home or as you prepare for the lesson this weekend. You'll notice on the rest of the thread, some discussion questions, memory verses, and some uh, topics to go over. But until next week, God bless and take care.